Amen. Hey, how y'all doing? Y'all got to give me one second. I ain't drink my tea. Hey. Uh-uh. <clears throat> yeah, appreciate it, my dude. Yeah, normally I don't do that, but <clears throat> I had these T-shirts. I ain't get here on time because they weren't quite the way I ordered them. You know. <clears throat> so I guess I was kind of distracted. But, um, yeah, I was, cause it's supposed to have a color logo on it. You know, so it's supposed to make that pop. And you know, we already got our own brand. We use Miss Christian, but I wanted to go ahead and partner with with uh, my weight room pro partner, uh, Pastor Freddie. Um, just uh, Pastor Freddie. So, anyway, <clears throat> we did this for Back to Church Sunday, and it's partnering with a minority business. Thank you, sir. Partner with a minority business uh, church on. It's called City on My Chest, but we told him to do Church on My Chest. And so we kind of helped him do a sub-brand. And so it's not the color it was supposed to be. It's not popping like I think it should pop. But some people say they still wanted them, so I give it to you at cost for $10 if y'all get them. Because we want to make sure we continue to brand our church. Um, the rest of them that we don't sell they're going to have to go throw some color on the, on the sleeve. I'm, I'm trying to help them out as much as I can, but I, I can't. But um, that kind of threw me off a little bit this morning because I was coming in happy, and then Donna showed me them shirts. So then I, then I had to go outside and make phone calls and stuff, you know. You know, like, you know, like I thought I asked for, you know, how that movie is. <laughs> Thought I asked an out-of-town shooter. No, I thought I asked. Anyway, hallelujah. Some of y'all ain't been to church in forever. Thank God. Come on, somebody clap for Back to Church Sunday. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. I saw some folks I ain't seen in I don't know when. Lord, I thought y'all had moved to California or something. Hallelujah. The Lord thought it fit to bring you to church. Hallelujah. All right, I'm just starting off real slow today. Tell I'm getting older now because I don't even care. <laughs> you know what used to happen? I'd be like, oh Lord, let me just bear it out. It's in my eye. It's going to make it through. No, nah, dude, I'm old now. All right, I'm good. How y'all doing? You good? Whether any first time visitors in the house, any first time visitors in the house, any first time visitors, hey, first time visitors, they're going to bring you some goodie bags, hey man, how you doing, thank you so much for coming, right there, ain't no usher back there, ain't no, oh, oh, your mama, your mama, <laughs> I'm all late, just come in, <clears throat> T-shirts that messed my whole life up. Hey, y'all, again. I wonder how they knew what y'all were. I'm like, man, how they know where she at? Welcome again. Hallelujah. Usher looking at me like, what you talking about? Anyway, let's go to John. Let's go to John chapter 9, <clears throat> verse 1 through 7. And I took a COVID test. I ain't got COVID, so you all right. I don't know what I got. You know, people don't even care what you got, as long as you ain't got COVID. I'm about to die tomorrow, but I ain't got COVID. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got COVID. <laughs> John chapter 9, the Gospel of John chapter 9, verses 1 through 7, <clears throat> and it reads, <clears throat> And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. 
as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When we had thus spoke, when he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay, and said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by the interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. Lord, help me bring a word for your people. Help my voice <clears throat> make it through. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. As you take your seat, I want to speak to you from this, this subject. I'm not made for a job, but created for purpose. And then that lazy people listen. I'm not made for a job, but created for purpose, which means you're going to work now. You still got to work. Okay, I just want to make sure. <clears throat> Billions of people go to a job every day that they do not like. In fact, more people die on Monday morning than any other day of the week. <clears throat> that is how much we hate what we do. Statistically, it's real. I research it. Because people go to jobs they don't like. They're wasting their abilities, their energy, their gifts, their bodies, their talents, their time, their brains, their skills, and their anointing. It is an aeronautical fact that if you leave a plane in a hangar and never fly for several years, the engine will be of no use. Conversely, if you fly that plane with frequency around the nation and around the world, it would be in better that condition than the one standing still. The reason why the plane is flying, uh, the reason why the plane that is flying is in better condition than the one sitting in the hangar is because it is operating in its purpose. The plane in the hangar, in fact, is eroding and falling apart because it is not operating in the purpose in which it was designed. Many of you that are sitting here right now are eroding and falling apart. The reason why you are falling apart is because your job is a hanger. It is not allowing you to use your gifts, your talents, your mind, and your full skill set or full potential. And because you have a nice office and a paycheck, you have pacified your emotions <clears throat> and manipulated yourself into acting like you are happy when your mind is not working. We spend one-third of our lifespan on a job. This year, you will spend 2,080 hours on a job. Most of us will have a 40-year career span. Mathematically, this equates for you spending 83,200 hours on a job you don't like. You spend more time in your day doing something that you don't like than working on something that will cultivate you. You need to make up your mind that you're not going to spend more time doing what is not helping you develop. God has did not God did not put you here to be miserable. He put you here to be prosperous and to take dominion and authority in the world. In fact, he said he came to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. He said he wishes above all things that you be prosperous and in good health, even as your soul prospers. Most of our jobs have us living paycheck to paycheck. When Christ, in fact, tells us he came to give us life and give it to us more abundantly. If you are in a job that is giving you adequate pay, you are out of the will of God. You should be producing something that allows you to operate in abundance. Why? Because he wants to make you a steward. He wants to make you a blessing. He wants to be able to say, I need you to give so-and-so this money and so-and-so that money. I need you to, 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 to sow into this organization or sow into that. He wants to make you a blessing because he wants to... He wants to be able to trust you with resources because he understand if you love him you would do with those resources what he tells you in fact we need to understand that we don't own anything god owns 100 percent of everything we have and you have to do with it what god tells you to do with it i know some of you can't handle this in this sermon it may not be for you but i'm gonna teach it anyway 87 percent of you don't like your job mm. Yeah, I know somebody. 50% do not feel satisfied or fulfilled. 
25% say that your job is the number one stress factor in your life. 41% of you are living paycheck to paycheck. 70% are not motivated by what you do. 50% are underpaid. 67% are in the wrong field. 72% are undermined so that you won't succeed. See, you were not born to be in a permanent job situation. No matter how much clay you put on a Coke bottle, it will not change its shape. The problem is the Coke bottle represents your job, and you shape your whole life around your job. Nowhere in the Bible did God ever say, get a job. He said, go to work. It is amazing that everything understands the principle but people. See, see, cars work. Watches work. Checks work. Monies work. Planes work. Computers work. Ants work. But we get a job. I want to suggest to you that jobs are from the devil. Because jobs are designed to take the, your focus off your purpose. Jobs are designed to keep you distracted from what it is that you have been designed to do. God gives you an assigned purpose. The devil gives you a job. Some of you are frustrated because your job is taking your energy, your drive, and your motivation away from you. And you are getting upset at God because you know that there is more than something that you're supposed to do in life. But God is sitting in heaven saying, I'm waiting on you to seek ye first the kingdom of God and my righteousness so I can take you to another dimension and add all the other things to you. I need you to wake up and work the work that Jesus who sent you. It's amazing. When I took this job, everybody called me crazy. I asked four pastors, should I take it? All four of them said no. Mama said no. Cousin said no. Everybody said no. First of all, they looked at the bylaws and saw I was going to be on a year probation. Then they looked at the money. They were like, boy, you're going to take a $30,000 pay cut to go there? And I was like, but there, you know, when there's much counsel, there's safety. And I listened to them and I heard them, but God said, I did not ordain you to be where you are. I'm telling you where I'm sending you. I'll work out your money. I'll work out your living situation. I'll take you to another level because I know what I have meant for you to do. And when you seek you first the kingdom of God, I'll add all these things unto you. Everybody thought I was crazy. I thought I was crazy too. I caught that midnight train to, to Virginia in reverse. I left Gladys. I left the chicken and waffle spot and I came here to Virginia. Come on somebody. But before I even got here, you all had worked out my pay to get it to where I, oh y'all don't hear me. I had walked away from everything but God worked it out without me saying a word. <laughs> See, work is an activity that exerts strength in order to perform a function or a duty. I'm not telling you to quit your job. Hear me well. Maxwell is not telling you to quit your job. Too many of you are not operating in your gifts and ask for an overabundance in benevolence assistance already. <laughs> what I'm, I'm telling you is that your job is not your life. I want you to have a different mindset when you go to work tomorrow. I want you to know that in your mind that those are not, those are your co-workers and not your friends. I'm here to get a check. I'm not here to befriend everybody. You don't have to be with me. You don't have to eat with me. And I don't have to go to the game with you. There is an assignment on my life. And if you are not an accessory to my vision, keep on stepping. See, sometimes we meet with people just because because we feel like we have to meet with people. But if they don't fit the vision in your life, you can't hang around them. How can two walk together unless they agree? Stop trying to be everybody's friend all the time. Because sometimes they smile in your face. They're going to talk about they ain't always with you. Hey. <laughs> it's an 11 o'clock folder that slipped in here. There <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh. See, Jesus 
was walking along. He sees a blind man. Jesus did not have a job. He has work to do. Jesus is not on the clock. He's just walking along, and he sees a need. He cannot keep walking as if he does not see it. That is why people on your job don't like you, because you always do stuff that isn't even in your job description. You don't know how to let stuff go undone. That is not completely in order. You always got to make sure stuff right, because something is in you called integrity, and you don't like stuff to be messed up. Y'all don't hear me. It, it was amazing. Uh, um, I had this job at this school, and some people might know what school it is, but I'm not going to say the name. If you know the school, just shh, be quiet if you don't. But I worked at this school, and, and they, they hired a principal. I, I know I had the best interview. It's funny. Uh, Brother Waters, they, 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 the Waters, they told me that, that I interviewed well, but they knew I didn't know this. Hold on. You mean to tell me I answered all the questions, right? But they're going to tell me, but we know you don't know. You calling me dumb in my face. You blind. You, you, you brave. But, uh, you know, and, and so anyway, uh, the, the principal that, that, that was there, I, I definitely know they lie on their resume. I, I really was doing a lot of stuff. And that's how when I did get a principal job, I knew what to do already because I was able to be a principal without pressure. And see, some of y'all get mad when you put in a situation where you know that you're doing all the work and the person over you not doing it and you get mad and want to quit. No, you're learning that job without pressure. There was no pressure on me because it wasn't my job to do. So if it went wrong, it's on him, not me. But, but the, the thing about it was a lot of the other assistant principals were getting mad at me because I was, um, was, I was doing the job and they felt like if I would stop helping, he would get fired. But the integrity in me, the godliness in me was telling me I can't just do that because I'll be letting down students, I'll be letting down parents, I'll be letting these people get a messed up education just because my pride, come on somebody. But because I was doing so much, the assistant superintendent started calling me, hey, we know you do this, can you help do this, can you do that? Because people are already telling me, when you say he, I can't say he not doing it. Now, I ain't from the streets, but I ain't no snitch. Now, if you rob somebody, I'm going to tell on you because I'm a responsible citizen. But, but I'm not going to get involved in bad stuff talking somebody because you made a mistake. You're the one told me I didn't know the answers for real. Come on, somebody. So at the end of the day, the thing about it was I began to be elevated because people saw that I was doing a job that I had not even been trained for. But come on, somebody, because of my integrity. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. When you really do what God wants you to do, you will be elevated. I became one of the youngest principals in the county because I was able to do something that other people wouldn't do. I stood up for right. Come, Y'all don't hear me. You got to learn how to stop saying that ain't in my job description. I ain't supposed to do that. God is trying to make you your name great at your job because even though people don't say that to you directly, they see you. Remember, David was keeping animals in the back of the, uh, keeping sheep, and he was killing lions and bears. His dad and his father didn't see him, but when Saul needed somebody to play the harp, somebody saw David and said, you know what? I know a little man. I He's full of valor. He, he's a mighty man of God. He keeps the sheep. And I saw him kill a lion and a bear with his bare hands. David didn't know anybody saw him. You got to work even when people are not looking at you because somebody watching you. There ought to be something in people of God that steps up and compels them to do something when someone is in need. There should be, there should not be a person walking home from church or to the church with all these saved, blessed people with these nice cars because if it were not for the grace of God, we would not be, we would be in the same position they in. Come on, somebody. It breaks my heart when I see people having to walk home. I don't like it because I know that God came to give me life more abundantly. Jesus is walking along and sees a blind man. I want you to pay close attention to the text. The blind man never asked to see, never expressed any inclination of wanting to be changed. But Jesus steps to him because Jesus does not want anyone around him that does not have vision. You, you will catch that when you go home. 
I, I can't hang around you if you don't have vision. Now, you can be blind, but I need you to have vision. Uh, yeah, 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 okay. Jesus understands that if you don't have vision and you are around me, you will bring me down. Some of us need to begin to reevaluate the people that we allow in our space. When you are around people that do not have vision for their life, they will begin to become intimidated, envious of, and dangerous to you because they are upset because they do not have what you have. People that have life and vision rejoice in their blessing. Those that who don't have vision become haters. In the words of Denzel Washington, those who can do. Those who can't talk about those who can. That's Denzel right there. Those who can do. Those who can't talk about those who can. See, the disciples ask, whose fault is it? His parents or his? See, people that have a job mentality always look to shift responsibility and blame somewhere else. They do not hold themselves accountable for their actions for, or the state of being of things around them. But those who operate under the unction of the Holy Spirit can't help but step up and fix things that are out of order. There are some saints in here that can never get comfortable with chaos around them. They can't help but get things on their job, at their church, at their home in order. We have got, we have got to get the modern day saints out of a job mentality. See, we need to stop getting so caught up in titles. See, John Maxwell, my favorite book, The 360 Degree Leader, he begins to tell us that we can lead from anywhere. Do you understand that Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. did not have a title? He was not a politician. He, he, he did not have a title. In fact, most of his life, once he left uh, Alabama, he, he wasn't even pastoring anymore. He, he was just an associate minister at the church at Ebenezer with his father. Didn't have a title. Gun didn't have a title. You understand what I'm saying? We're looking for a title to give us authority. A title does not give you authority. Some people have titles all day long but have no authority. Oh, yeah, yeah, y'all hear me? See, see, see. See, there are some people, some members here that I lean on for advice that may not be deacons, trustees, or ministers. Deaconesses or whatever title you may think of, we have, we have to get away from chasing titles and focus on the kingdom work that God has at hand. Your title means nothing. It doesn't mean anything. Too many people want to be VIP in church, but are not about my father's business. If you want to be great, you have got to serve. If you want to be great, serve. That's all you have to do, sir. I'm just telling you. They asked Jesus, who sinned, him or his parents? I like what Jesus does. He didn't even ask a question. Read the text. He just walked away. He didn't even ask a question. He, they said, hey, who sinned, him or his father? He, 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 he just walked away for a minute. See, some of us are going into a new season and need to get to the place where we understand that we don't have to answer every critic's question. We don't have to defend ourselves from every rumor and the gossip it brings. You ain't got to tweet back at folk and Facebook back and Instagram back and LinkedIn back and Snapchat back. You ain't got to clap back at everybody because you have to be about your father's business. You got to get yourself some elbow room and get some people away from you that are only causing you distraction. You got to learn that I can't be around everybody because everybody is not about my father's business and everybody don't have my good intentions for me in their thought pattern. Some people just hang around you to bring you down. Some people just hang around you to get your business. Can I tell you something? If somebody always want to pray with you, but they always want to pray for you and never want you to pray for them, they knows it. They don't never need prayer, but you need prayer? I can pray for you. What's going wrong? Leave that alone. 
I ain't learned that in seminary. I learned that at work. <laughs> seminary didn't teach me all that. Life did. So live by charity through me. Shh. They pray for you. Say, yeah, I got a thorn in my side. You gotta be like, you gotta be like Paul. Tell people all your business. See, see, see. Woo. Some people you gotta get away from you because they stifling your gifts. Iron sharp as iron. But if I keep rubbing up against wood, come on, somebody. If, if I rub against another piece of iron, I get sharper. If I rub against my iron to some wood, I'm going to get duller. Come on, somebody. Let, let, let's go to science class. Science says that only electrons leave an atom. And the electrons have what? Negative charges. And the negative charges of one electron, of one, of one atom, leaves another atom to, to balance it out. If the other one has a positive charge, the negative charge atom com, com, uh, combined with the positive charge atom so they can balance out. What does that mean? That means when you hang around negative people, you think they're getting better, but you are just getting worse. Because whoever you hang around, you're going to average out. Come on, somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm trying to talk to somebody. If, if, if you were 10 and I'm a 5, I think it's going to be like 7.5 or something. We're going to balance out. Don't you keep hanging around people that are not on your level. And, and in fact, they, maybe they're not on your level and they can get to the level they have potential. You can hang around them. But folk that always going to stay in the same place for the rest of their life, you can't hang around them because their electrons are going to take over your positive energy. Because some of y'all not spiritual, so I got to bring it down for science to y'all so you can understand in the natural why you need to stop. You are a whole bunch of atoms that are built together to make the compound, which is called you. And you have positive charges and negative charges. And some of us have more positive charge than negative charges. And when we hang around electron, uh, 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 abundance of electron folk, come on somebody, our energy begins to be depleted. That's why the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they agree, unless I I want to walk on the level that you are on. I don't need to walk with you. Oh, I'm speaking to every sleeping giant in here. God is waiting on you to get some space between people so he can close the space between you and him. He's going to cause your gift to make room for you, but you have to be focused. He's going to cause your gift to bring you prosperity, but you have to lose your job mentality. I'm talking to some people that have been sitting on their gifts and not operating in them for too long. I'm talking to some people that are frustrated and are ready to walk in the anointing and authority that God has ordained them to walk in. If you can shine out and praise God in the belief that you will walk in authority, it will flourish in your life at an accelerated pace. I'm telling you right now, I'm thanking God right now for me right now for you. I'm thanking God on our behalf for the level he's taken us to because we've been in a shift for a long time. I'm just shouting for the blessing and the abundance that's going to come to you for that business God has already told you to plant. I'm shouting that even though you didn't get the loan, God is going to bring money out of somewhere because you're going to keep walking toward the mark of his holy call and you're not going to look back. Come on somebody. The Bible's says the race is not given to the swift nor the strong but those who endure so even when you get knocked down baby just get back up and walk again as long as you keep getting back up the bible says a saint falls seven times it don't mean you just fell seven times seven is a number of completion so no matter how many times you fall get back up again get back up again and start that business again get back again and get that marriage right. Get back up again and pass that class you flunked. Get back up again and do whatever God has called you to do. Get back up again. I don't care how many times you fall. If you never fall and you never tried. If you never messed up, you never tried to accomplish anything. You show me somebody that failed and I'll show you somebody who is successful because if you never fail, you ain't never tried to do nothing. Stop letting people make you feel bad when you fail. At least you got in the game, baby. They sitting on the bench. So what you missed the game, 
when it shot, you was in the game. So what you dropped the pass, you was in the game. So what you lost the business, you was in the game. Ooh, I ain't got time to fuss with folk that sit on the bench. I'm sure the disciples laughed at Peter when he started drowning, but he walked on water. Huh? <laughs> People want to laugh at you for something they scared to do. People want to laugh at you because you failed, but they have not tried at all. Get yourself some elbow room. I need, I need some. Remember back in the day, you get ready to play a little game in school. They told you to stretch your arms out and touch fingertips to make sure you have some room between you. Some of y'all need to touch the fingertip with somebody and begin to <laughs> space yourself out so you can go to the next level. You keep trying to hang around people that's always telling what you can't do and not what you can do. I, I need to. Uh, move, move over some. I, you keep telling me I can't start this business up. <laughs> move over some. And in fact, once I spread out, step about two steps to the left. At at the eye, yeah, can't, can't. I, I need somebody that agree with me. I need somebody that's gonna take me to the next level. I need somebody who's gonna motivate me. I need somebody who's gonna tell me what I can do. I need somebody to say Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. I, I, I need somebody to cheer me on. I need somebody to be the wind beneath my wings that's helping me go somewhere. I don't wanna hang around anybody that tell me what I can't do. Tell me what I can do. Don't tell me I'm gonna lose. Tell me I'm gonna win. I don't care if the score is 50 to 1. You better still be out there cheering for me because of that still time on the clock, baby. I'm gonna still play this game called life. You worrying about talking about you getting too old. Biden is old as I don't know what, and he the president. Huh? Life ain't passed you by. If you still here, there's a purpose for you, and God is still wanting to use you. You better ask Abraham. He didn't have no blue pill at all, but he got down and made Isaac. Come on, somebody. Y'all better watch out. God will give you life in some area that you've been dead in because he is able to do whatever. He is the one that gives you the power to obtain wealth. He is the one that the author and finisher of your faith. Stop looking at your friend because they're not with you. You better look to the healer which come with your help and tell God, I'm ready for my blessing. You told me you wish above all things that I be prosperous in good health. You told me if you began a good work in me, you shall finish it. I'm waiting on my Blessing, baby. Just call me Jacob. Just call me Jakeba. I'm going to hold on you and I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Lord, I know. I know. I know somebody. Please go get me some day quill because I'm going to, if I'm this hype at 8 o'clock, because y'all normally the, the sophisticated group. I should have grabbed the headset. The headset keeps me sophisticated. I'm sorry, Brother Waters. I would have been a little more sophisticated if I had the headset, but the microphone do something to me, but I ain't want to be coughing because I, I can move this out the way if I cough. But can I tell you something? Ain't it amazing how God ain't let me cough yet and I've been coughing all day because God gives you the power to do whatever it is he wants you to do. I don't care how weak your voice is. God is magnified when you have to speak. I don't care how low your bank account is. He'll put some money in it when he has a vision for you. If it's God's vision, he'll give you the provision. If it's God's will, he'll pay the bill. I need you to understand that my God... I'm believing for you that even, I know we kind of close to the end of the year, and we done went by so fast. You can tell I'm getting old. They say, the year went by fast. I mean, oh, we go like, when the year go by fast? It went by one day at a time, didn't it? Did we, did we skip Tuesday? <laughs> did, did we somehow skip a Wednesday or Thursday along the way? What, what, what happened to make it go by fast? I mean, my goodness, 
Did they put some turbo boost in the sun or the moon? God, see, 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 I'm believing God is going to pay you to operate in your full-time gift, in your gift full-time. The word is not coming from someone who has not struggled to get to the point of operating in their gifts. Once I made up my mind that I was not going to settle for a job but wanted my purpose, y'all called me. They kept trying to tell me to do some stuff that wasn't ethical, and I'm like, I ain't going to do that. Got fired on a Monday. Y'all called me on a Tuesday. Huh? And I wasn't supposed to get fired now because the school had doubled in size. The school test scores had went up by 200 and some percent when I got there. Come on, I keep the statistics now. How Dion do I keep my receipts? So I said, hold on. I know you ain't firing me for no other reason, but I won't go over here and lead these people astray and go start this other school you want to do. I can't let my people lose their job. So if you want to lose them, you're going to have to lose me. And I guess they said, okay, but it don't matter because whatever you stand up for what is right, God will send you somewhere you're supposed to be. I ain't worried about no job. Don't no job run me. My job is not my sort. I got a job so I can get some seeds and plant into the kingdom so God can bless me. I don't never be scared about getting fired from no job. In fact, y'all ought to know I want to get scared to get fired from here. There were some people that didn't agree with the vision. And I said, you can always vote me out, baby. If you got a certain percentage of people at the church to have a meeting, y'all can vote me out and there was some secret meetings that went on behind the scene that you thought was secret but the Holy Ghost had let me know what was going on because my God is my ever present help and he shall never forsake me even when my enemies come at me like a flood he won't let you overtake me if I walk through the fire I won't be burned yeah I said it you know it's true Don't be afraid to be afraid to lose anything. Don't be afraid to lose what God gave you because he'll give it back, pressed together, shaken together, and overflowing. In fact, definitely don't worry about losing something God didn't give you. I'll, I'll give up my eyes and you can definitely take my Ishmael. Stop trying to hold on to stuff. God trying to shake loose. Sometimes he shakes some stuff loose from you so he can get something else to you because you can't multiply a fraction until you reduce it down to its least common denominator. And God is trying to take some chafe out of your life. God is trying to take some dead people out of your life so you can go to the next level. Come on, somebody. Ain't it funny how negative two times negative two is positive four? I don't quite understand that. Don't make sense to me. But I guess two negative folk can be positive because they both negative. And so they get along with each other. <laughs> but if I take a negative two times a positive two, it's a negative four. So I just uh, exponentially increase my negativity if I hang around a negative person. So if you're not cheering me, I can't hang around you because we will never be add up because God not into addition. He's into multiplication. Now, see, if God added negative two plus two, then I can at least be a zero. But God said, no, I don't deal with, with, with adding. I deal with multiplication. And so you got to start hanging around some positive folk so you can multiply your positivity. But you keep hanging around negative folk and you multiplying your negativity. You got to hang around some people that know how to shout and praise God even when it don't look good. You got to know how people can find the good thing that happened even though you lost. You got to hang around some people that always trying to lift you up and exalt you and take you to the next level. I don't know about you, baby, but I need some cheerleaders in my life. It ain't got to be women. It can be men. It don't have to be grown folk. It can be children. I need somebody around me that's going to say, you can do it, Maxwell. Keep on keeping on. I know you tired, but keep on pushing to the finish line. I need somebody that's going to walk with me. Oh. 
Help me. I promise. I'll wear the headset next week. <laughs> Eight o'clock sitting here like I could have slept longer. I could have came to 11 o'clock. He, he's shouting in here. He usually at least waiting 20 minutes down the line. He can't even talk trying to shout, shut up, man, and sit down. <laughs> See, <laughs> you have got to get to the point well, you understand that you are far more valuable than a check. I almost don't, I don't want to tell the whole story. I think John was there. And I'm going to leave that alone. It's going to look like something. I'm going to leave that alone. Yeah, I'm going to just leave it alone. Nobody can pay you adequately for the gifts God has endowed on you. <laughs> Some of you will get to the point where you will write your own job description. In fact, remind me, I'm supposed to write my job description for the enjoy. Hey, look, you will write your own job description. Loose that gift and let it out of you. It has been dormant in you too long. Shout out what, is, what you are called to do and claim its manifestation. Your assignment never takes a break. Some of you have wasted too much time sitting in the hangar. We are ready for all the planes and New Beach Grove to take off and fly in their kingdom purposes. If you've been sitting in the hangar and you haven't been doing what God has called you to do, I need you to step up and be about your father's business and seek ye first the kingdom of God, which is your gift, and watch him add all these things unto you. You lonely women that keep looking for a man. If you get in your purpose, God will add that man in your life. Come on, I'm trying to talk to somebody. I know you ain't happy. Come on, somebody. At the end of the day, you got to understand God will add on to you what it is he know you want and need as long as you seek your purpose. Men, you keep running to the wrong person. If you seek ye first the kingdom of God, he'll add that house to you. He'll add that wife to you. He'll add Add whatever it is you need added in your life, but you got to seek his purpose. See, your call will produce revenue. When you struggle to make a difference, you will never struggle to make a dollar. I'm going to say that one more time. When you struggle to make a difference, you will never struggle to make a dollar. God will begin to bless you for all the seeds of goodness that you planted. Night is coming when you will not have to work. Night is the darkest season. More millionaires are made in a recession more than any other time. The wealth of the wicked is being stored up for the righteous. Money is about to find you. It's about to start finding you if you exercise your faith. We still in the midst. The first thing I did when I coughed two times, oh, let me go get the COVID test. People still terrified of COVID. We still are in a recession. We just, they just not telling you it is. Go buy some eggs. That's why I saying you miss Sandra. Don't go buy eggs. Y'all buy them things. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate it. God show sure ain't. It costs too much. <laughs> miss Sandra, I need some eggs. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? See, God wants you to exercise your faith. See, I, I was looking at uh, uh, Chris Rock. Uh, it, it, uh, maybe I shouldn't have, but it was funny. And, um... <laughs> His stand up killed a messenger and he started talking about one of his jokes was comparing the difference between people that have a job and people that have a career. Job people hate career people because they're always happy about what they do. People with a job hate what they do. People on a job have too much time at work. They are all ready to go once they punch in, he said. People with a career never have enough time in the day because they always come with innovative ideas. And the funny thing is, he said it in a funny way, but I started saying, like, hold on, that sounds serious right there. It was funny, and I laughed because he said it in a, a comedic way, the way he did it in the rhythm. He was like, you know, the people, were, you know, it was crazy. But at the end of the day, that's life. When you are not doing what you were created to do, you are miserable. Because that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Somebody can be teaching and hate it because they don't even like kids. Somebody could be a truck driver and hate it because they don't like driving. 
And you can switch them to same people and the person that really don't like kids like to drive and the person that, that don't like to drive really like kids and you put them in their right place, they'll be happy. That's why when we do the spiritual gifts test, I try to move you to where you gifted at. And some of y'all say, well, my gift didn't come up as this. That's why I'm moving you. You be mad. You a usher trying to, trying to tell people where you want them to sit all the time. Well, I would sit right there. No, sit over here. You know, y'all, you, you, you need to do security. Brother Drone right there, you need to do security. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? An usher that don't smile, you are security bound. See, it, but, it, but, 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 but you got to understand you were not created for a job. You were created more. You were created to do more than work. You were created and given an assignment. You were given more than an assignment. You were built for a specific purpose that nobody can fulfill but you. <laughs> nobody can find you from what you're called to do. No one can downsize what that is that God has purpose for you. Jesus saw the blind man spit on the ground, putting mud in his eyes, and told him to wash in the pool of Siloam and told him to come back. When the blind man returned with his sight restored, Jesus was gone. Pharisees asked him, who healed you? He didn't even know who healed him. I have a problem with some of you high-class Christians that forgot where you came from and don't remember that God brought you from a mighty, mighty long way. I have a problem with people who do not understand that if it was not for the Lord on your side, they would have been on the street begging like some people that we turn our nose up at. Come on, somebody. It wasn't your name. It wasn't your degree. It wasn't your contacts. It wasn't your influence. It was God. Do you know how many foreclosures, bankruptcies, evictions have taken place this year and all through the three years of COVID? But you still have food on your table and clothes on your back and a house to stay in. Some of you behind on your rent, but you still living like you just paid it. You better bless the creator who bless you and continue to do so day by day. The reason why I'm not stressing a job is because man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Father, my job does not sustain me. The word of God does. My check is not my source. It is seed that I sow into the kingdom in order to reap a harvest. Even if I get laid I'll be okay because if I seek me first the kingdom of God he will add everything I need he will add my house he'll add my car he'll add my spouse he'll add my money he'll add my healing he'll clear my throat he'll take away my cough he'll heal your body he'll heal your marriage as long as you seek me first the kingdom of God and his righteousness he'll add on whatever you need add on all your house your car your career your marriage your children your man whatever it is he'll bless you stop looking for a job and chase your purpose Ooh, Ooh, Jesus. Money don't sustain you. God sustains you. Man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Father. I can be in a bad place right now, and God can speak me out of it. You better ask Job. All he needed was a word. All he needed was a word. If he can bring the prodigal son out of the pig pen and bless him. If he can take Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego out the fiery furnace, he can bring you out of your stuff. If he can bring Daniel out of lion's den, he can take you out of your job and put you where you're supposed to be. Come on, somebody. If he could take, if he could take Joseph out of jail and make him the second person in charge only next to Pharaoh, he can elevate you on your job. 
if God can empower David to kill Goliath with a daggone rag and a rock, he can use you to take care of all the enemies that continue to come at you. What is it that you think is too hard for God? Nothing is too hard for God. See, it's funny how when you look at an airplane in the air, it looks so small. And you be like, man, but when it land and you get ready and you see it out the window, and when you're standing right there at the airport, it's huge. And you're like, how in the world that get in the air? Because it's so far away, it seems small. But when it lands and you're right there by it, it seems overwhelmingly monstrous. And you're like, how in the world does this even get out the ground? Are we going to be all right? It's too heavy. Went from too small to too big in our mind. Why? Because it was closer. God seems small to some of us because he's so far away. But he said, if you draw nigh unto me, he'll draw nigh unto you. And when you begin to walk closer to God and see how big he is, you don't worry about your enemies. You don't worry about your problems. You don't worry about your sickness. You don't worry about your disease because you know how big God is. Oh, y'all don't understand. I had to draw closer to God when I was going through hell on my job. If you got hell on your job, you getting closer to God, pray. Come on, some of us got closer to God after we talked to Jack and Daniel and we were driving on 64. God, if you can get me out of this this time. <laughs> Hardships are sometimes designed so you can hold on to God's unchanging hand. See, remember, when I was young, and you know, I ain't had no game, I'd go take I go, me and my friend Barney would go watch Freddy Krueger by, by ourselves, And then we go get two girls we like, because then we know where the scary part comes. We look like we bold, you know what I'm saying? Because then you know the girl going to grab you. You know, you ain't but in sixth grade, you know, you know what I'm saying? He said, oh, you're so brave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Sometimes God allows you to go through some roller coaster rides so you can grab onto him. Because you have to understand, he allows you to go through some things because he wants you to know it's him that's on your side. And, and sometimes when we get too far away from him, he'll allow some things. Some of us are blaming the devil, and I feel sorry for the devil because sometimes it's not the devil. I believe the devil is, is, is in wherever he at, crying because we keep blaming him for stuff God doing. That ain't even me this time. It's the Lord. And sometimes he allows some things to gut punch you so you can bring yourself back to him. Because he's chastised those who he loves. Because he'd rather chastise you and make you feel a little hurt than let you go down the road you're going down that's going to be your demise. And he creates it so you can draw nigh unto him. I need you to do this. Begin to pray and seek God's face, not his hand. What my grandparents at? What my grandparents at? All right. You see, y'all know them little kids always run to y'all because y'all always giving them something. And, and so, 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 you know, they, they, have you ever, let me, let me talk to some parents who, have, I, I saw this little boy get a whooping. He knew he did something wrong. And the mama hit him. He cried and went to her. And I was like, my God, I don't know if I'd go to her after she hit me. But the funny thing is he had enough wisdom. No, he knew he did something wrong. But I don't know if he was saying he was sorry. But the problem is with us, when we, when we get in trouble, we run away from God. I believe that's why God said, Don't, you can't get to him unless you come to him like babes. Children are so innocent. They know where their source come from. They have enough humility. Even when, you, even when you, you, you hit them out of chastisement, they know it's in love, and they still draw nigh unto you. Can you start drawing nigh unto God even when your life not going good? If you draw nigh unto him, he'll become bigger, and you will understand it's him who's the author and finisher of your faith. You will understand it's him that gave you the power to attain wealth. You understand it's him that will not withhold any good and perfect gift from you. Because the closer you get to him, the bigger you will know he is. And you'll be like, man, God is bigger than my problems. God is bigger than this hater in this next cubicle. God is bigger than this cancer. God is bigger than this setback. God is bigger than this unemployment. God is bigger than this unholy boss I got. God is bigger than all of my problems. Get to know him and seek his face, and he'll give you everything that's in his hand. Because grandparents and parents, when your children and grandchildren seek your face, you want to bless them even more. 
But when they come to you begging all the time, you don't want to really give them that. God just like that. You made in his image, you know that. So the same way your children get on your nerve when all the time they call you when they want something, or your friend or whoever, that's how God is. He wants you to call on him all the time. And the more you call on him, the more he's going to be ever in present help. Come on, somebody. Draw now unto him and understand how big he is. He has a purpose for you that only you can fulfill. I need you to walk in that purpose and understand that purpose so that God can make you a blessing. He didn't, he not satisfied with just blessing you. He wants to make you a blessing. And the Bible says that people will bless, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And through this covenant, everybody will be blessed. So everybody will be blessed through you as long as you get into your purpose. All things happen for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. So a lot of times we say all things happen for the good. <clears throat> Keep reading the sentence. Right. To those who are called according to his purpose. So when you seek your purpose, it don't matter what goes right or wrong. It's designed to make you better. Hallelujah. Is there one that wants to walk in that purpose? Hallelujah, Jesus. Is there one that understands that Jesus Christ is the only way you can receive this anointing and the power that I'm talking about. Is there one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? <clears throat> Is there one? Is there one? Is there one that say, I need a church home. I need somewhere where the ministers and deacons and deaconesses and People can pray and cover me. Is that one? Yes. Yes. He's worthy. Yes. Is that one that needs a church home? You may come. Everybody say praise him. Praise him. Yes. Say praise him. Praise him. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Blessed Savior. He's worthy to. Come on and say, pray. Listen, as we get ready to go down from this place, like I said earlier, make sure that you're plugged in and connected some kind of way with all that we're going on and all that we're doing. If you desire a shirt, uh, Miss Donna is outside in the foyer that you are able to get a shirt from there. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Now the grace of our Lord be with us now and forevermore in our coming and in our going. God, it is my prayer that, God, we will continue to walk and work in our purpose and that, God, you will open up every door. As we leave this place, continue to bless us. I pray that, God, we have a Luke 252 anointing, that, God, we will have favor with both you and also with man. In Jesus' mighty name, the blessed people of God shout amen. <laughs>